Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss how we can fetch data from closed Excel workbook using Excel VBA with ADO connections. Meaning you can pull data from another Excel file without even opening it in the background. It's a super handy for automations, reports and consolidating multiple Excel workbook. So let's get into it. Now let's talk about what is ADO. ADO stands ActiveX data objects, which allow us to connect to external data sources. And yes, Excel is one of them. It treats Excel like a database, which means we can use SQL to query the data and update the sheets. You can use ADO to read data from closed Excel workbook and also to update any existing rows. Here is the Excel file which we are going to read data without opening it. Let me open this Excel file and show you what kind of data we have in this Excel file. This file has associate details like associate ID, associate name, department and salary. Let's fetch this data by writing Excel VBA code. Let me close this Excel file and we'll jump into Visual Basic Editor. Use shortcut key Alt plus F11 to open Visual Basic Editor. Here click on Insert menu and select Module. Now let's write a simple subroutine here. Let's first write clearing the existing data from our Excel file. So here if you see in the left hand side under property section, so here we have a sheet name and the code name. So we are going to use the code name of the sheet. So the code name here is sheet1. So let's use this code name here, sheet one dot auto filter mode equal to false. So before we clearing any data, if we have any filters open, it will remove those filters. Next, let's define the file path and the sheet name. To fetch data from any closed Excel file, we have to specify the file path and the sheet name from which sheet we have to extract the data. So let's get the file path here. Let's get the file path. So here is our data source file. Hold the shift key and do a right click and select copy as path. Now go back to the visual basic editor and paste that uh, file path here. Now let's create a sheet name. If I open this our source data file, you can see our sheet name is sheet one, right? So let's close this file again and go back to the visual basic editor and give it a sheet name as sheet one. And you have to specify here dollar sign. And if you want to fetch data based on the number of rows, then you can specify the sheet name something like this. Sheet1 dollar and specify the data range here like A1 to C4. So what it will do, it will fetch data only starting from A1 cell to C4 cell. So let's remove this range from here and we'll keep it sheet1 dollar. Now let's create a connection and open the connection here. Let's create a variable to initialize the connection here. So I'm using a variable name as con as adobe.connection. So here I am using a early binding connection. If I go to the tool and reference menu here, you can see I have selected this ActiveX data object library reference. So when we select this, then this will be treated as an early binding. So what it means is whenever we press a dot after our object, then it will show methods and properties of those object. If you create a late binding connection here, then those properties and methods will not reflect. For example, if I create this as an object, so this is how we have to create the late binding connection. Now, if I press a dot after our object, then methods and properties will not show. So always try to select the early binding so it will help a lot to check what are all methods and properties that object has. 
Now let's create another variable for connection string. And to connect to any external data source, we have to create the connection string. Here we are connecting to the Excel file, right? So let's create a connection string to connect to Excel file here. I can share this connection string in the description box for your reference. Next, we have to add the data source here. So our data source is this one, which is a file path. So let's type that. Then we have to add a one more property here, which is the extended properties. In extended properties, we'll write Excel to 12.0 XML and we have header equal to yes. So this is the connection string we have to use to connect to Excel sources. Now let's initialize the connection here. And to initialize, we'll use the set keyword here con equal to new group dot connection. Now let's open the connection by passing this connection string. Now let's create a SQL query to fetch data. Select a star from. So here we have to specify our sheet name and the variable name is sheet name. Now let's open the record set by running this SQL query. And again, I am creating a variable uh, which is early binding variable I am creating here. So, and the variable name I am using as rs as record set. And I am creating another variable which is a i as integer to loop through the headers. Now, let's initialize the record set here. Again, we'll use the set keyword to initialize the record set. And to open the record set, we have to type rs.open. And if you press a space, so the first parameter is asking you to enter the source. So basically source is a SQL query and our variable name is SQL. Comma and the next parameter is active connection. Basically it's our connection which we have opened above. So the variable name is con. The next third parameter is the cursor type. So here you can select ad open forward only. So this works very fast to fetch data from closed Excel file. You can use other variable, uh, you can use other options also. If you want to update any data or if you want to move through the data, like move next or move previous, something like that. But in our case, we are just fetching the data from the Excel file. So in this case, we'll use open forward only comma and the Lock type will select as a read only as we are just fetching the data from the Excel file. Now press enter. Now let's write the header to the Excel file. So here we'll loop through the columns, whatever data we'll get in the record set. So for that, we'll write for i equal to 0 to rs.fields.con minus 1. So here we'll write the data back to the sheet and the, we are using the code name as sheet1 dot cell first row i plus one dot value so initially the i value will be zero so that's why we entered here i plus one and we are going to write the headers on a first row so that's why we enter the row as one here equal to rs dot fields bracket open select the index as i dot name so it, by this it will add the header names to the first row in our excel file now let's copy the data from the record set to our excel file right and to do that you can use frs.eof basically it's a end of file equal to false if we have any data then only we'll copy the data to the excel file else we'll give the message as no data found so here what we can do is again we'll use the code name as sheet one dot range and a2 so starting from a2 copy the data from record set right so sheet one dot range a2 dot copy from record set so you can use this method to copy data from the record set and if you press the space here so it will ask you to enter the data as unknown so in this case we'll enter the rs record set right so whatever data will be stored in the rs variable that data will get copied to our excel file 
Now, once the data is copied over Excel file, let's uh, close this record set by typing rs dot close and set rs equal to nothing. Basically, it will release the memory. So next, we have to close the connection. And to close the connection, what we have to do is first we have to check if con dot state equal to one, then only we'll close the connection and we'll release the memory. So let's add some error handling to this code. So we'll go all the way to the up and here we'll write on error, go to error handler. Right, so we'll go all the way to the down in here, we'll enter error handler colon. So if we get any error, then we'll just directly give the error message error dot number and error dot description. Now think that whenever we get any error, it will throw the error message, but it will not close the connection. And the file will show in a read only mode if any, if you open that Excel file, right? And to make sure this code works perfectly fine, even if you get any error, we have to close the connection to the file. And to do that, we'll type here go to clean exit. And we'll create this go to option here. So what will happen whenever we get any error, the code will go to this line and it will throw the error message, then this line will run. Now this will take you to this, this line and after that this line will get executed. And once this line get executed, we can exit the sub so that it won't reach to this step again. Now this step will get executed only if we get any error in our code. Now we are done with the coding part. Let's check whether if we have any error in our code or not by going into the debug menu and select compile VBA object. If we have any error in our VBA code, it will pop up to that line. All right, so let's go back to the Excel file and add a button to execute this code. And again, use the shortcut key Alt plus F11 to go back to the Excel file. So let's add a button here. We'll go to the insert menu. We'll go to the shape and we'll select one of the shape from here. And we'll edit the text. We'll give it a name as fetch data. Give this in center. Select the shape and right click and select assign macro and select the macro from this list and click OK. Now this time if you click on this button, you can see it fetch the data from that closed Excel file. If I click on this fetch button one more time, you can see how quickly it's fetching the data from the closed Excel file. Now, if I open that source data file to compare the data, you can see, let me make this is small. You can see exactly the same data it fetched from this file. Not only fetching the entire data, you can fetch the aggregate data from the closed Excel file also. So let's edit our code to get the aggregate data. So you can see our data contained at department and salary, right? So let's fetch total salary by department. Okay, and the header name is department and the salary. So let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor and we'll edit our SQL query here. So instead of a star, what we will do is we'll enter the column name as department, comma, sum of salary as total salary. And at last, we type group by department. So it will fetch data department by total salary. Now again, go back to the Excel file. Now click on fetch data. Now you can see how quickly it fetch aggregated data, basically department wise total salary. And that's it. With just a bit of VBA and ADO, you can read data from closed workbook like a database without even opening the source file. And if you like this content, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for more Excel automation tips. And in the next video, I will show you how we can update existing records in the closed Excel file. And that's it for today. See you in next video.